What's up, everybody? This is Miss Rock Fame. I am a co-host on Those to Watch Radio, co-host on the Mix Fist Podcast. I own Body Rock Dance Group. I half, I go half on the Meeting of the Minds, but color is the network man. Um, I created the Meeting of the Minds Presents. Um, I teach a dance team, and I'm a senior instructor for Tipsy Twerk. Um, you guys, this is Mr. Five Productions. Welcome back. This is a brand new episode. I'm guest hosting today, and I will, I get to talk to my friend it's so cool i met this girl about two years ago and she was on those to watch radio and i interviewed her at the seashore farmers lodge about the um project that she was working on with miss aisha right yeah yes so further ado let me go ahead and have her introduce herself hi everyone my name is tiffany i also go by ecstasy on the mixed fits podcast and I am an entrepreneur in the Charleston area. Um, I own Laundry to Go by Tiffany. Um, it's a full service laundry company. Um, basically, we go to you, we pick up your clothes, wash, dry, fold, and bring back the same day. Um, I am an outreach coordinator for the Tri County Human Trafficking Task Force. I am currently writing a book. Um, probably won't be ready for another year. There's a lot of chapters. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I am a poet. I do poetry and I, can you, what else am I missing? Well, there's many aspects to Tiffany. Um, let's indulge in some of them and get into <laughs> yeah. the grits of things. So I happen to know, let's talk first and foremost. Let's get the, the, the fun stuff out the way so we can talk about the serious stuff. Mm -hmm. Mixed Fits Podcast. Um, we started it together. Tell me about your role in the Mixed Fits Podcast and why you wanted to be a part of it and create it. I felt like there were some topics that needed to be discussed that I think a lot of people were afraid to talk about, which is kind of what brought us to the name The Mixed Fits because um, we're both from up north and we're trying to fit in in the south. And it's definitely a lot of culture clashing that goes on. But being grown women about it, we can talk and mix. <laughs> and so um, that's where the idea came from for The Mixed Fits. But... Um, my main goal was just to in, indulge in, you know, logical conversation. Right. Um, I'm a natural debater, but I tend to not be like the type that er. You know what I mean? That's I'm me. Very, I'm the er. <laughs> <laughs> I'm op I, I love perspective. I love hearing other people's perspectives and opinions and ways of thinking i was a psychology major so i think that has a lot to do with it um but yeah i just i want to get to know people i like to meet people and that's just really where it kind of came from right and to keep it on a pg tip um but we are going to talk about it because it's something that's up and coming we have um she is also a part of a mini mix with me um and it's called kinky mixing with the mix fits um, mm -hmm. you want to explain to everybody what that is um basically it's just topics of discussion pertaining to sexuality um a couple of taboo topics that um some people might clutch their pearls about <laughs> but um it's a dope conversation yeah basically. it's very open-minded okay and um it's very educational um there are topics that we talk about um that might help people whether it be with their own sexuality and feeling comfortable with that or with their um their relationships with their partner or partners right um there's a lot of things that society kind of deems like oh no taboo, like taboo. <laughs> so we're not going to push the envelope that far but we are open to um suggestions on what we talk about with right. you know our listeners our viewers right and we like to have even with kinky mixin and the mix fits we like to have that back and forth with our viewers right because we really want to reach out like we want people to understand what we're 
trying to do, what we're trying to say, but we also want to get a better understanding of what people want to hear at right. the same time. Right. Awesome. Awesome. And we're going to move along. Um, she's an author, guys. She's actually a great poet. She posts her poetry up all the time in multiple groups, depending on situation and subject. It actually is a healing thing. Um, there's a lot of her words, you know, actually help and, and it's very therapeutic. Um, what got you into writing and what what made you start writing that book? Depression. Oh, well, for poetry, depression. The book, Trauma. Um, I've been through quite a bit. Um, so a lot of people will tell me like, I can't believe you made it through that or, and we'll talk about that more later. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it never really resonated with me when they would say that. Mm -hmm. So I would kind of just be like, I, I just made it through it. <laughs> like I just did it. Just did it. Yeah. So, <laughs> but a lot of people that go through things like that. They don't know how to get out of it. Yeah. They don't have that whole, oh, I just got through it. They, they're they stuck. Well, I think it's beautiful that you found an outlet instead of it letting ruin you. Because trauma and bad situations can sometimes stick with a person mm -hmm. and, and shape the way that they turn out. Mm -hmm. And um, you're a gorgeous young woman, okay? Thank and you. inside and out. And the fact that you didn't allow your past situations to shape who you are today is amazing and the fact that you're using your outlet that can possibly help other people going through the same thing is absolutely dope yeah so um you said you're not gonna finish up the book for about a year now yeah there's just so much that i have to put into it um because it stems all the way from childhood it's a memoir um so it's basically my story, it's my experiences, it's my traumas, it's my coping, it's my healing. Um, and my, I feel like my full intention for writing the book is to utilize the book as a platform to become a motivational speaker. Right. I already do the public speaking right. aspects when I go to talk at these different forums and everything about the human trafficking right. stuff but i wanted to utilize it on a bigger scale and really like because i love helping people that's where my passion lies my purpose really is mm -hmm. to help people right whether it be help them find their own strength or help them figure out a situation where it's a healthy benefit to them right so that's really what that's about the idea of the book came when I had thrown myself into something and it wasn't mine and who it belonged to ripped it away from me mm. and I I mean when I tell you it devastated me because I put like a hundred and fifty percent of myself right. into it right and so for them to just say er, no we don't need you anymore it's right. kind of like like what now right right so I, I was like okay you know what i'm gonna tell my story and i'm going to tell it the way i want to tell it right and nobody can take it away from me right well let's get into that now when i met tiffany um i was on the air for those to watch radio at the seashore farmers lodge in james island it was during black history month mm -hmm. and we decided to do it on sacred land um if you don't know what the seashore farmers lodge is google it You'll figure it out in Charleston, South Carolina, for those who's watching out of state. Um, so we had um, Tiffany come on with a guest that we booked, um, Aisha Thurston. Yeah, Miss Aisha. Yes, Miss mm -hmm. Aisha Thurston. She came on because Miss um, Aisha Thurston was an advocate for sex trafficking. Okay, she fought against it. She fought for it, you know, to, she to, to, to abolish say, it. Yeah, she's an okay? abolitionist. She's yeah. an abolitionist, yes. So, um, upon meeting Tiffany, I realized that her story rolled a lot deeper, no offense, than Miss Aisha's. Miss Aisha, you know, acted as a representation, but Tiffany was the empathy of the situation. The reason why she was the empathy of the situation, because she had the story to tell. Um, what made you start fighting for these young men and women out there that's getting sex trafficked in? Um, it was a conversation I had with a coworker. Um, she kind of threw the idea at me 
after I told her what I had gone through. Mm-hmm. And she was like, you're the perfect representative for victims. Like, you want to go to school for psychology and criminal justice. And, but really, you should be more hands on in that field by working with actual. So why not be an advocate or, right. you know, um, help the police with setting up human trafficking stings and stuff like that. And there were so many, there's so many different avenues within that movement that I could have gone on, right. but I resonated more with the victim. And I always said to myself, I would never want my daughter or my sister or anybody's child or sister or mother cousin doesn't matter what age because it happens Mm. to ever go through the fear and the horror that these girls go through right so that's the empathy part of me that's the empathetic part of me the strength in me is if i can get out i'm gonna get them out so as of right now i've saved two girls so far right um i fully intend on helping more Mm -hmm. um it's just there's not a lot there's some things that i can't really say because then it'll kind of like if anybody's watching but um there's a lot of behind the scenes things that i do and i just it just it felt like that's what I needed to do. Right. So, but the thing was, was it wasn't proposed to me until like a month before I met you. Right. I mean, that ball started rolling. I was meeting law enforcement. I was meeting judicial. I was meeting um, other victims, other survivors. I was meeting so many different people within the um the human trafficking task force mm-hmm. that but at the end of the day it was me and the other survivors that the, this the light was on like right. y'all lived it y'all know it tell us what we need to know so that we can utilize our power or our, our authority to help these young girls now most people have the wrong impression on sex trafficking Mm-hmm. Um, they think that a white van comes around and snatches people up and then you never see them again and now they're sold off to the highest bidder. Mm-hmm. Not to say that that's not a scenario. That probably happens somewhere. But on a common basis, on a real low-key basis, how are women and young men sex trafficked is sometimes without even realizing it's happening? Because at some, I know there are some people that get manipulated into things like you know, I'm not going to say my, my friend's name, but she lives in New York City. And um, there was a situation where um, somebody she was dating, a yeah. guy, yeah, you know, somebody she trusted and lived with, you know, started, you know, hey, babe, you know, I'm into, you know, I'm into games, you know what I mean? And and she would like go, you know, entertain the guy because she thought her man was going to be there. And he'd be like, yeah, I'm going to get something to eat right quick. And y'all just... And then come to find out they're paying for that. Is that a form of sex trafficking? Yes. That would be um, pretty textbook. One of many textbook ways of going about it. There's um, like what happened with me. I was um, looking for the word. Basically, I was introduced to this girl's pimp and you didn't know at the time though no i didn't i didn't know the terminology that she was using at the time i was very naive as we all were like (laughs) super naive yeah and i was like what is she talking about and um i was recruited that's the word so um that's another form so she basically i guess she thought that i was weak-minded enough that i would just go with the flow and play along and the funny thing is, is, I actually did just so I could get the hell out of there. Because sometimes that flight or f- 
fight thing yeah you know i mean the pimp was even taken aback by my responses to him like you sure you never done this before and um that that part the part that really traumatized me was when he told me that i had to make the phone call which was tell us what that phone call was he basically pointed to a phone a pay phone because this was 20 years ago quarter (laughs) (laughs) we bring it way back Mm. um and told me to call my family and tell them that i'm not coming home that I've got a new boyfriend in New York and he's going to take care of me and they'll never see me again. And that's kind of where I was like, oh my God. So So how did you get away? So the phone he had sent me to go use was actually broken in half. Like literally. Yeah, I know. I was kind of (laughs) like, how the hell did that happen? But I took that as a sign from above that I got you. I'm going to get you through it. So when I got to the phone, he stayed across the street. Now, mind you, the girl that he who had tried to recruit me was standing with me. Yeah. He sent her with me. Right. So I didn't say the the crazy part is when we walked, we walked by the phone when we went to the house. And I remember specifically in my mind thinking, like, how the hell does somebody break a pay phone like that? And the fact that he pointed to that specific phone and told me to use it, I had I could have been the dumb girl. But, oh, but we walked by it earlier and it's broken. You mm-hmm. sure? Because then he would have accompanied me to the next corner right, store right. to use the phone. So that's where Street Smarts kicked in. And I'm not from the streets. I'm from a small town in eastern Connecticut. So... Where I got that from, I don't know. Instinct. Yeah. Yeah. So when I I picked up the phone and I showed him and he yelled to go down to the next bodega, which is a corner store for some of them that don't know. And um, he told me I had two minutes to get to the corner store, make the call and be back at the house. So it wasn't like a realistic time frame. Right. So I was like, yes, daddy, because that's how I had to address him. And I went walking. And as I'm walking, I was watching him out of my peripheral vision. And when I like didn't see him, I kind of figured he couldn't see me. And that's when I just hauled off and ran. You just took off. I just, I mean, knees to chest. Mm. And this girl is behind me. I don't know where I was running to. All I knew is I needed to get to a train so that I could get to Port Authority and get on the bus and go back home. Right. So she's screaming, stop, stop, stop. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, he's going to hear her. I got to run faster. So when I remember running across some bridge and it wasn't for pedestrians. It was like cars whizzing by me. You Mm -hmm. know how they are. They're narrow bridges. Yeah. And so I was like at risk of getting hit by a car, run across this bridge. You in the Bronx? I went from the Bronx to Washington Heights. Yeah, you went to Manhattan. Yeah. So I get into Washington Heights and I come around a corner and there was a firehouse. I know where you were. And I was over by the the college. I know where you were. Yeah, I know. And so... I come around the corner and the firehouse, like the firefighters were outside. It was like mid August. So they're, you know, they're all hanging out. It's a nice night. And, um, I was like, Hey, Hey, can you help me? I need to get to the train. I'm out of breath. And they're like, Whoa, 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 Whoa. Are you okay? Are you all right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Cause I didn't want to drag yeah. attention to myself mm-hmm. because right. that's going to slow me down. If he's following behind us in a car, Absolutely. God forbid something I didn't want. Mm-hmm. So, I was like, yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I, I actually got to get to Port Authority. I'm going to miss my bus. So, I played that. So, I'm running. She's still running behind me. I don't know where the hell she was. So, as I'm running off, I hear her yell, stop, stop, to me. They stop her and say, whoa, 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 what's going on? 
because they picked up on something now yeah of course they're firefighters so that's what they do <laughs> she was like she she stole my wallet da, 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 or something to that effect so they were trying to stop me but i had already gotten to the train so they was like she took your wallet and then the girl was like no 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 she forgot her wallet because she knew then that would have gotten mm-hmm. me in trouble yeah so they said well go 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 get her go get her so I get to the bottom of the stairs. She screams my name. And the way she screamed my name is what stopped me. Because it literally gave chills down my back. Because I was like, this girl is scared. Yeah. I could hear it. I mean, God knows what the repercussions for her were. I, it, to this day, I don't know. And you don't even know if that girl alive and it, or and not. And that's the reason it. why. I think the real reason why I do it. Because I couldn't save her. I begged right. her to come with me. I had money to buy her a... Ch- like, wherever a a train ticket or a bus ticket i didn't have enough for a plane but i could have gotten her on a bus and sent her wherever she wanted to go but she's from washington heights so that's her home where is she gonna go yeah yeah you know and she was like i can't leave i can't leave he's gonna kill me you have to come back with me and i was like i'm not coming back with you Mm -mm. i'm not you can either come with me or you can go back there empty handed, but I'm not going with you. Right. So throughout all of this, what is your main mission with, I mean, well, of course you want to save these girls, but after you save these girls and young men, and I'm saying young men because it happens yes, to men too. Men are, boys and men are yes. not exempt from trafficking. What, 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 what type of support system are you trying to build for these people after they finally get out it? Because you can just imagine the reprogramming that they have to go through. Rehabilitation. Mm-hmm. The rehabilitation they have to go through. The self-confidence they have to rebuild again. You know? Oh, it's a process. It's, I've heard stories of other survivors who have been... This is the thing, okay? A lot of these girls are manipulated into this life from a young age mm-hmm. they come from broken homes right they come from homes they either ran away or they got kicked out that's why a lot of awareness i do more awareness work right now than mm-hmm. i do helping the survivors because right. there's a lot of entities in the area that help with that right so all i can really do where it means something is bring awareness so like these young girls they'll be scooped up by these men who actually watch them and that's a big thing too is social media Mm. if you have kids please watch their content know what they're talking about know who they're talking to meet the parents of these kids that they're talking to absolutely because a lot of times these girls will a girl your daughter's age will befriend your daughter if she's a runaway but she's also under the watch of her pimp right so he's using her to recruit your daughter to get her into his stable right okay and he promises the girl who's recruiting all of this stuff like Mm -hmm. oh yeah i'll make you my bottom bitch Mm -hmm. which means like you're like the number one the number one (laughs) you know i know it's kind of weird that you would call (laughs) yeah um but oh their their tactic is drugs right they feed drugs down these girls you know oh i'm gonna buy you the newest jordans oh i'm gonna pay you to get your nails and your hair done oh i'm gonna take care of you oh whatever you need i got you right. and then when it comes time to pay up mm. how do you think you got to pay them back mm. oh you earn it off yeah yeah things like and that. it's always something more he's tacking on oh well you remember that that dress i bought you that you wanted so basically you never pay off no and you'll constantly you're constantly stay working. Your body is a commodity. Right. And right. it's it's harder with the younger girls because they grow this like sense of trust with their pimp that or their trafficker. Um, that it's hard for them to pull away from. It's almost like they're addicted to 
the life they're addicted to the man they're because this man has promised so much he's been there like he's been their protector he's protected them from other things out there in the mm-hmm. streets he's um guided them he's given them advice that they think is like the good but what they're not understanding is they're not in control of their mind or their body right. he is like that false that false sense of security because um you know i've seen situations where they actually acted like family to them yeah you know what i mean a father figure if you will yeah you know so you know it's 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 a it's a dangerous situation and um i do want to thank you for sharing that that's something that you don't really have to share all the time Mm -hmm. but the fact that you were brave enough to tell everybody about it hopefully shed some light on certain certain situations hopefully you know you're looking at your kids friends a little differently you know and i just wanted to add one more thing too um i know when i was on the those to watch with you guys last year not not the first time the second time yeah we talked about because it was when the white van thing was going around mm-hmm. and everybody was calling it human trafficking that's abducting not yes. human trafficking thank you human trafficking can come from abducting but there's so many there's different types of human trafficking there's forced labor there's sex trafficking which is the prostitution of minors there's organ harvesting there's Mm. financial bondage and i believe there was one more but i'm not sure but those are your four main um as or not aspects but your four main things under the human trafficking umbrella right and so that's where i feel like i need to bring awareness and educate Right. Because I don't want people to be misconstrued on what something is when really it's something else. Right. Because you're not going to go to an AA meeting when you have a heroin addiction. That's right. You see what I'm saying? That's right. It's still an addiction now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're not going to get what you really need Mm -mm. from an AA meeting versus hardcore rehab. Right that's absolutely right you're right well thank you tiffany i do want to thank you for being here i think it's awesome you finally got your interview and i think it's even more awesome that i got to do it i know i know so you guys make sure you catch xtc xtc or on facebook tiffany knowlton um instagram Tiffin Key. Tiffin Key. Instagram, Mixfits Podcast, M I X X F I T Z. You can catch her on Facebook. She's always going live. She has new episodes popping up. Um, her laundry service for all your laundry service needs. Facebook, um, Laundry yes, to Go. Laundry to Go. Laundry with the number two, mm-hmm. Go by Tiffany LLC. Mm-hmm. Um, I am actually holding a special from here until the end of the year for our three year anniversary. Hey. So make sure you're, you hit me up for details on that. Um, I have a lot of specials and a lot of different, I have some, some new pro- like, right. Um, not products services. Ah. I have some new pr- services that I'm offering as well. And you guys, there's a coronavirus going on. People are working every day. It's important to have your clean clothes. It's important to be clean, not to track those dirty clothes into your home. So, um, just an, uh, just a personal, um, piece of advice um coming into your home if you do have exhausted clothes that you've been wearing all day don't track that in your house put it in a bag have a hamper at the front of your door and it's so easy all you gotta do is call her she'll come pick it up she'll wash disinfect fold dry all this other stuff and bring it back to you it's simple contactless yes contactless it's simple it's out of your house you have clean clothes coming back to you and i'm pretty sure the dang laundry bag you put it in is gonna get washed as well (laughs) so you'll be fine with bringing everything back but love thank you so much make sure to follow her on instagram and on facebook once again i am miss rock fame this is mystify productions and we are out bye guys bye